Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to our latest Zoom cast. As you can see, we have a wonderful guest with us, the longest tenured connection to commercial truck training, and that is Charles Bowles of Commercial Truck Trader. Welcome, buddy. Oh, hello, everybody. Good to see you. <laughs> we, uh, the full disclosure here, we were going to do this as a regular podcast call, and then Charles had just joined us for our virtual mini camp, and we decided to take advantage of this platform and bring it in video form with you as well. So this should be a lot of fun. So Charles, thank you. And Ken, I'll hand it off to you for uh, comments and getting rolling here. <laughs> Very good. And thank you. Uh, and uh, Charles, you got an interesting title. I'm going to read it. The Director of Strategic Initiatives at Commercial Truck Trader. That sounds like a big wig to me. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. It sure doesn't pay like one. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, uh, Charles. Uh, we're going to cons uh, consider Charles like if, if this was uh, a regular newscast, he would be like a contributing editor because he's been with us before and we, we communicate on a regular basis. So excited to have you yeah. uh, as always. And so how are things in Virginia? Things, things are good. You know, we're in the same position everybody else is. We're kind of hunkered down. Um, my hair is a little longer and it's been in a while. Um, not as long as it's been when uh, you uh, first knew me. I'm not going to get into that right now. But um, it's certainly uh, certainly longer than I'd like it to be right now. And I know that uh, we've got some travel to do in the next month or so and uh, some TV recording and stuff. And hopefully all of us will have our hair looking nice by then. Yeah, yeah I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make an attempt today to hit the barber, so we'll see what happens. But uh, oh you know, lord, we, uh, we're excited to have Charles on because commercial truck trader is such an incredible tool. And during this pandemic time, I think it's it's more important than ever. And that's why I wanted Charles on today to talk a little bit about that. So Charles, you know, we're in a kind of a weird time right now. How has that affected uh, the marketplace for you guys? Well, first, uh, Coach and Will, thank you all for all you do for the industry. The fact that you've trained over 10,000 commercial dealers is simply incredible. Um, your impact to the industry can't, cannot be overstated, particularly now when it's so important to be on top of your game. Well, you know, the, the pandemic's effects were not so much something that blindsided us by the changes in the industry. Yeah. Rather, it caused about a three-year acceleration to the evolution of both the commercial industry and our strategy overall. Um, wow. You know, yeah, it, there, there are two main takeaways uh, from the p pandemic that we've seen thus far, you know, particularly as they relate to commercial sales. The first is the change in the commercial vehicle dem demand, the type of vehicles that are in demand right now. And second is the extraordinarily rapid evolution of digital retailing. So if, if you'll just allow me for a second, I'm just gonna expound a little bit on both of those, those two takeaways. All right, so let, let's look at the changes in demand. As the world changed how it shopped, so did smart retailers, online purchases, particularly food and everyday items. Really, the, the amount, that velocity has skyrocketed. Yeah. And with the rise in online, yeah, and you think about it, with the rise of online sales comes the inherent rise in deliveries. In order for that fulfillment to adapt to this increasing demand, you have to have many more delivery vehicles. And so, the, and, and what we're talking about here is really the middle mile and especially the last mile. As, as you well know, the last mile is the final stage of delivery. That's Amazon truck, which comes to your house. Yep, right. uh, but it really started in the factory, was delivered by uh, some sort of intermodal uh, transportation to a distribution center, and then delivered to a warehouse. And from there, the goods were delivered to residential customers. And it's this last piece from the warehouse to the residential customer, which is the last mile. And it's logistically such an important component in the supply chain. People have come to expect, and I know I have, uh, one or two day delivery of orders. Right. You know, uh, yeah. when we order something online, right, I mean, you're expecting, except for toilet paper and thermometers right now, I think you can get everything in one or two days. 
But in order to accomplish this increased demand, more vehicles have to be placed in service. So this is what we're seeing on commercial truck trader. You know, with over 1.4 million unique monthly buyers coming to the site, you know, executing millions upon millions of searches, uh, certain things have become clear. March 15th changed sales for cargo vans, for delivery vans, for cube vans, and just vans. Those searches have indexed higher than prior to the crisis. Um, wow. Google has reported that the search term cargo van for sale is indexing at or near the highest point it has in five years. Wow. wow. You know, and it, it just makes sense. You know, entrepreneurs uh, who aren't old and tired like me see an opportunity in, in that delivery space, you know? So that's the first thing. The, the demand has really shifted. And as, as retailing has changed, so has the delivery mechanism. So it's less of, uh, the middle mile actually going directly to a large big box store. It's now it's that last mile delivery for residential customers. And so that's, that requires a lot of vans. Uh, you know, you've probably seen that as well. How much you will and can in, yes. in what you guys are doing. Yes. I mean, okay. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I see that with the dealers, you know, uh, it, it's kind of interesting Charles because with a lot of our dealers, the, uh, commercial orders have not slowed down that much. No. They've shifted to some different type companies. So it's just a shift. Yep. Uh, we've noticed that the very small companies probably aren't buying as much, but your larger companies are finding a different kind of demand. And like you mentioned, that last mile, you know, getting it there. Uh, Amazon's going through the roof right now. Uh, they're looking for more drivers, more yeah. contractors, because everything, things that you might have been willing to wait on or that you would have walked, you know, down the street for, you're not even doing that. You're ordering it online. Yeah. So Absolutely. You know, right. You're, you are dead on. And a, a question for you. Uh, so how do you see the long-term impact of what's far as the, the shift in what we're doing. You know, that, that's interesting. And that relates to the other takeaway, which is the growth in pre-dealer contact. Uh, we're seeing yeah. um, our traffic on commercial truck trader. I can't speak for any of the other marketplace sites, but they're probably similar. But our traffic is up double digits over last year during this wow. period. So, you know, that, that's a good thing, you know, and yay for that. But what we're seeing is there's a lot more deliberate research being conducted. This is amazing, particularly as the industry has really seen, uh, you know, substantial decrease in overall sales. Um, you know, the auto industry as a whole, the SAR is almost, what, at 12 now instead of uh, 17.4, something like that. So it's dropped. But what, what this has really revealed is that buyers who are currently in the market are true buyers. You know, nobody's going to commercial truck trader. Or nobody's calling a dealership just for the fun of it right now. Yeah. You know, that, that's just, we're, we're, we're not an enthusiast site. Uh, the commercial trucks are not an enthusiast category like uh, boats or cycles or RVs or anything. So when people are searching now, they are definitely current in-market buyers. They're, you know, it's either replacement demand or increase, increasing fleet size in a very specific category. And that's what's driving this. So we're seeing commercial dealers. Well, we'll what we're seeing as well is commercial dealers may not be getting as many leads overall from whoever they use, but those that they're receiving are converting at a much higher rate because their level of intent is so much higher. Good point. And, and, and the last thing on that is that we're also seeing a significant increase in the search radii. In other words, people used to search within, you know, a specific market, but now they're, they're searching, you know, and for things as simple as cargo vans up to 250 miles away. That's a tremendous shift in opportunity for dealers who have a strong iron li online presence. Oh, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. So, you know, uh, t t in my mind, and I'll let you talk about this, in my mind, if ever there was a time to grow the business it's going to be through technologies like commercial truck trader because uh, uh, i was talking to a small dealer uh, the other day 
and they asked me about expanding their reach, I said, well, uh, you're going to have to do it through technology. And commercial yeah. truck trader is a prime example of expanding your reach. And it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, so speak a little bit that uh, you said it expanded the reach, but yeah. um, what would be your advice to a new dealer who's looking to grow? They haven't used commercial truck trader before. Uh, what would you tell that new dealer? Well, there, there are a couple things. Um, you know, the first thing is that there's no panacea to, to this pandemic. Yeah, um, yeah. There, there's nothing that's really going to have an impact unless you invest in it. And just whether you're buying work truck solutions or commercial truck trader or truck paper or anybody else, your investment in dollars is really only half of your investment. Um, the other half has to be in making sure that you know, your units are online and they're, they're represented properly. Um, you have to be able to give that. Uh, we, we've talked about this before and um, it, it, people get hung up on that it's so daunting to, to do digital retailing and, and just, you know, listing vehicles. It takes so much time out of the day. We have a little thing called five by 15, which means just five days a week, spend 15 minutes in the morning working on your listings. That, that's Very all. Nice. If, if, yeah, I mean, it, it, when, you, when you chunk it down like that, you, you're, right now we're sitting at home, but you know, even if we're sitting in a dealership in a, in a, in a few weeks, um, you come in, you get your coffee, you, you, you look at all of your, your things, and if you just sit down for 15 minutes and just focus on those listings, honing those listings, it, it makes a huge difference. And when you take into consideration that good listings reduce uh, days on lot by up to 14 days, if you practice this all the time, you're gonna get an additional turn of inventory over the course of the year. And when you think about that, what does that do to you and your dealership? You know, it's yeah, just significant. 15 minutes a day to cut down on 14 of those days. That's a trade off I would take. Well, we, we, we all would, but just like everybody else, it's hard to get started. It's just like an exercise program or like we're all dieting now to get ready to be seen on those, uh, those training videos and things, you know, it's hard to not, to not drink that 50th beer or eat that 12th donut, you know, it's just, but those are the, if we could just start, it yeah. makes a huge difference. Good point. And you know, yeah. it's interesting. I got a uh, email from uh, Mike Hyde uh, ah. this week and uh, a dealership that I'm supposed to be going into in June uh, is, is looking at canceling. Uh, and I'm going to be calling them today, by the way. <laughs> so, Thank you. It's a big and, customer. Uh, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's a Chrysler dealership in, in Libertyville. And I think it's yeah. more from the fact that management is saying, hey, look at ways we have to cut costs. What are some ways we can cut costs? But my answer to that always when someone says, well, we're thinking about not using commercial truck traders, prime example. I said, so in essence, you're going to cut off your right hand in order to save blood supply. Yeah. Is that <laughs> it? <laughs> and, and, and I get a That's funny look and they go, oh, well, think about it you're going to take something that makes you money, doesn't cost you money if you use it correctly. So you're going to reduce. And here's what happens when you start cutting those kind of services, you lose more sales. So now you got to find other services to cut and you lose more sales. And then you find other services to cut. And before you know it, Absolutely. Your department you're putting up a for sale sign. Yeah. I said, so. You, uh, you, yeah, right. An interesting That's absolutely right. Yeah. So well, it, 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 it's so true, Ken. And, you know, it, it really goes to that old adage, you can't cut your way to prosperity. Um, you, you know, th there's no question that, that most every commercial dealer is looking for ways to cut, cut costs. That's a reality for all of us. You know, we're all doing that um, because we're scrambling to preserve jobs, pay bills, keep the lights on. You know, expense reductions are smart. But, however, and this is a point you make so well, Wholesale cutting of expenses without regard to how they impact sales 
will result in that infinite regression that we talked about. It's a slow spiral. Even in these really difficult times, you know, with the SAR we were talking about being almost half what it was, there's still a large number of commercial buyers. And if the dealer isn't marketing, they aren't getting those buyers. And if they don't acquire those buyers, they'll continue to shed expenses due to sales losses. And it just starts an endless downturn. And this is not to say that marketing shouldn't be closely scrutinized. Um, But digital marketing drives sales. And when times are tough, that's that's really when they're needed. Just like the same thing is with sales training. Um, You know, the, these are the times where dealers can actually grow share. They can grow it two ways. They can, they can make their uh, digital presence better, and they can make their people better. And this is, the, this is really the time when smart dealerships, and we see it, actually grow share by growing training and by making sure that they continue with their digital marketing. Oh, thank you. You're, you're so right. So if you've got yeah. a dealer who, for some reason, uh, is thinking about cutting or has struggled a little bit, can you give three or four coaching tips that could help them be a little bit more productive with commercial truck trader? Yeah. And really, once again, you know, these are really brand agnostic tips, whether it's a dealer's own website, whether it's commercial truck trader, work truck solutions or truck paper or whoever else, uh, because they, they all work. Um, they, they just work different ways. And I, I, I like to think ours works best, but in reality, you know, everybody, everybody contributes to it. Um, the, we, we talk about this in great detail. I've done this on uh, several of your uh, virtual seminars and I've done it for the used truck association and uh, NTEA and a number of, well, and ATD and other places. We talk about the paid principle and I'm, I'm not going to go in great detail here because I'm sure people are getting tired of hearing it, but the paid PAID that stands for the four main pillars of how we drive uh, uh, sales performance uh, digitally, regardless of uh, platform. And the first uh, letter P is price. If you don't have a price on your listing, people don't engage. We know that empirically from seeing, really observing the behavior of millions of users searching millions upon millions of times. We have programs that allow us to actually we can't identify who the person is, but we can actually watch their cursor, that we can watch what happens. And they blow by anything that has no price on it as if they were getting out of work early. They just race out of there. So um, those, those get significantly less play. So the P is price, always have price. Even if your price is considered higher than in market price, put the price on there because somebody will contact you and you can work through that. Absolutely. The second. Yeah, and the second one is appearance. We're not talking about how good something looks. We're talking about where it appears in Google search results. Commercial buyers are not retail buyers. They buy based on things associated with the vocation, the application, or the job associated with the vehicle. So your descriptions in the first 300 characters must include landscaper truck, if it's a landscaper truck, uh, dump truck, work truck, cargo van, whatever it happens to be, because that's how people search. They search cargo van for sale near me, work truck for sale, Anaheim, California. That's just how people search. Yeah. And if you, if you build it that way, then you'll, come, you'll render higher in, in, in Google search results. So that's the P and the A. The I is images. We're very much an image-based uh, consumers now, basically. We, you know, all of us, you know, if I'm on, uh, Amazon and there's advertising something that doesn't have a, a photograph. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm for one thing, I don't believe it's actually there. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, it, it so it, it was like, it's like when a dealer puts a stock photo or um, no photo, you, you know, how often have you thought, does that dealer even have that? Yep. You know, yeah, or when they say coming soon, well, how, how do I know when it's coming? You know, how long am I going to wait? What am I, you know, so images are really critically important. And one thing that you and Will talk about all the time in terms of, of images is when, particularly when, when a dealership has their inventory on the lot, you always talk about it and make and everybody scratches their head at first, turn, turn the vehicles around. And people are saying, what? Well, that's what they're buying. They're not buying the front end. You know, 
no offense to any of our large OEMs because God, they pay our bills. But people search primarily by the function of the vehicle. They're not searching first by Ram or by Ford or by Nissan or Chevrolet. That's a, that's a secondary consideration. The first is the application of the vehicle. So uh, the same thing holds true online. Make sure that you're showing that vehicle in motion, whether the dump is up, the drawers are out, the, the right. cargo right. doors are open, right? You know, and, and finally, description. Um, commercial buyers are not retail buyers. They don't buy based on trim level. Um, and many times, the actual buyer of the vehicle is not the one driving it. So they really don't care what, how comfortable that vehicle is for their, the, the person driving it. You know, they, they just want a vehicle that functions for their job. So the description really should be associated with a commercial description what this vehicle does. So that's paid. That's the, the P-A-I-D, price, appearance, images, and description. And I think I've said that so many times that I, I can say it in my sleep. My dog who's sitting beside me probably could say it by now. You know what's interesting though, Charles, is one, we've put that into practice on our own stuff too, and we don't do a good enough job of it. And by we, I mean yeah. me, but we still are aware of that process. But when I think yeah. images in particular, given that I do a, not, a lot of newsletter stuff for our guys and we feature vehicles, lately we've had a lot that have been stock images. Um, and what I, yeah. what I equate it to, I think anybody can relate to this. If you've got an eBay account and you're buying something used, now I know a lot of the vehicles are new and all that, but just go with me here. If you're buying something new or used, do you want to see a stock photo of how that thing was in 1994? Or do you want to see how it looks today? Right. You know, even if it's a terrible photo sitting on somebody's bed, you want to see that image in real form today. So the more authentic Absolutely. you can be with that stuff, the better. Oh, very good. Oh, yeah. You know, it, you bring up a really good point, particularly when you talk about used vehicles. One thing that buyers look at for, on commercial vehicles, used vehicles particularly, is the rubber. Mm -hmm. Rubber is so expensive. Replacing tires is an extraordinary expense. And if you're paying fourteen grand for, for a used um, service body truck, and you have to replace the, the tires as well, you know, you're thinking, I didn't get a very good deal. Or if, you know, I didn't see photograph of the engine or I didn't get a shop report and the thing's got blowback, the engine's got blowback, all of those things, you know, are contribute mightily. So you're absolutely right. The, the, the dealers who do the best are the ones that have the most honest descriptions yes. and the most honest photographs yeah. because somebody knows what they're getting. Yeah, that buzzword today is transparency in a lot of different industries. Yeah. Yeah. So Charles, in, in, in the vehicle description, then you would probably not recommend beautiful white truck. <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you something that uh, is really hilarious. Let me let me remember this. This is um. Have, okay, here it is. So we had a dump truck come over as a listing. And talk about a gaffe. This thing was written by somebody from the retail side, which no offense, but somebody who just didn't care. It was almost a cut and paste. So there was a class five dump truck, a big dump truck or, 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 or class six dump truck that came over. And the d description said, I swear to God, this is the perfect vehicle for the busy soccer mom. Put the kiddos in the back and head to the next lesson. And I'm thinking that's probably illegal to put your kids in the back of a dump truck like that. But that's honestly a description, and nobody's going to buy no nobody's going to buy a truck from someone who takes so little care in marketing that. I mean, if if they're not even checking their listings that closely, how do I know that they're the body's not going to fly off the thing? You know, they they obviously care little about the truck, and by extension, the buyer. Yeah, yeah, and, and not I to mention too many point. soccer moms that would put into Google looking for a truck with a large back <laughs> and to hold soccer players. <laughs> a dually, yeah, yeah. You, you don't see this too much with your site in particular, but you do see it a ton with uh, commercial sites that don't have either a connection to Commercial Truck Trader or Work Truck Solutions um, is the one where they actually have the price of the chassis but not the outfit. 
I've seen that a ton lately too. And I, and I know that's very prevalent, but it seems to be coming back as a, as a problem a lot. Well, it's, it's also deceptive advertising. Yes. And you know, it's, it, 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 to me is, it is, is such a poor user experience. When I call thinking I'm going to buy a dump truck for 52 grand and then they say, well, that doesn't include the dump body. That's, you know, like another $11,000. And you're like, wait a minute. That's, that's, you, you represented a picture of a dump truck. It was a stock photo, but you're just trying to sell me now a chassis cab. And then I have to put that on there. I can tell you that that's when people hit the eject button. That's why price is so important. And when we're talking about price, the incorporation will of the entire price of the vehicle. I, that right. people are so much more comfortable when they actually know that. God, I feel, I always feel, well, first when we, we're, we're only an intermediary, so we don't, we don't police price, but when it becomes, um, when, when somebody brings forth a, a, a complaint or something, we investigate it and we remove those that are. Um, what, what I find is a lot of dealers simply say, well, it just came straight from my DMS. Um, and they, you know, our service just added the photo. Well, t take time, take that five by 15 minutes in the morning to make sure that your listings are accurate um, because they, they're going to get you in trouble if they're not. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and I like what you guys recommend. A, a lot of times people think that a tool like commercial truck trader is plug and play. Uh, we put it in and then we sit back, cross our arms and wait for something to happen. And it's so much more yeah. than that. I mean, it's, you know, when we go into a dealership and especially if they tell me, well, you were thinking about, you know, not using commercial truck trader. And that's when I say, so you're going to cut off your right hand in order to save blood supply. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. So I said, why would you do that? Well, we, we're not, not getting results. Well, walk through with me and I do this. Walk through with me exactly how you're using it on a daily basis and let me see some of your listings. And when we go through it, I'm able to pick things out. Well, gosh, you don't have enough details on that truck. Gosh, you've only got six images. You know, you need a lot more than that. And then we usually tell them, I mean, you can't put too many images of the truck on there. No. The more than no. No, you, you can't. Got someone, yeah, you got someone who's making a decision on a work truck. They're they livelihood. They know everything about that truck. It could be 60, 70,000 plus vehicle. And they do want to know the back end. And they do want to know, you know, what compartments it has. They do want to know everything. And they want a description that's extremely detailed. Yes. And, mm -hmm. Absolutely. and the mistakes I find are those mistakes. And say, gosh, you know, you're really not using it like you should. Let me put you in contact with Mike Hyde or whomever. Yeah. And, uh, and let them walk through and, and go through that. So if you get somebody, uh, here's a question that, and maybe it's a question for Mike as well, uh, Mike Hyde. Uh, so if someone goes on commercial truck trader, do you guys, uh, and you've got so many customers, it's going to be hard to do this. You've got a new customer. Do you check in with them to see where they are and what they're doing? I mean, is that part of what you guys do? Yeah, and that that's a big part of it. And and it uh, and this is uh, true with us, and it's probably true with any other uh, marketplace site for commercial. Uh, our greatest problem with dealers churning out of programs is it's within the first six months of the program. Okay. Uh, that's because they 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 haven't bought in or haven't committed to at least a five by fifteen haven't haven't really been using the paid uh, practice. And what happens is that they don't see the results, they don't meet their expectations, and they leave. So what ends up happening eventually is they come back, and then they do the same thing, and they leave. So what we do is we have a lot of touch points. We have, I think, 13 touch points within the first uh, three months. Um, wow. uh, the rep, the customer service rep. We've also got those OEM regional managers, Mike Jennings, Mike Hyde. Uh, we have Terry Williams on heavy duty. Uh, we have John Renesco on trailer. We have, uh, I mean, there's, there's just a lot of us. And so uh, we're all making touch points with those dealers and it, it really does help. But you're, you're 
question really goes to to really a deeper point, which is like any good tool, there needs to be an operator behind it, uh, using using it the right way. You don't buy a hammer and just set it on the table, hoping it's going to frame in your new porch. I mean, in a similar respect, you don't invest in a digital program and expect it to not require some hammering on your part. You know, whether it's your own website or work truck solutions or truck paper or commercial truck trader, trader, half of the investment is the dollars, but the other half is really the commercial manager's time in order to be yeah. successful, absolutely. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, but I, yeah. You know, I, I always ask them, what's your gross profit on, on one truck? On one truck. And I usually point out, let's make it, let's say medium duty. And their gross is going to be twenty-five to thirty-five hundred dollars, uh, and then you know, the, and that's money to the dealership. Uh, so if if they sell one extra truck per month at twenty-five hundred dollars profit, how many months would that pay for on commercial truck trader? One truck. Oh my lord! You know, you sell you sell two two trucks and you paid for it for a year. I mean, that's essentially what it comes down to. And yeah. it, it's, you know, the same with, with the other, uh, you know, uh, 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 types of solutions in our marketplace. We're not very expensive um, compared to, remember when, and I was in newspapers for 25 years, but I remember selling a local car dealer, a Sunday back page full color ad for $8,000. Eight thousand dollars for one week. Wow! And you just you, you it's just stunning when you think about that. You know, eight thousand dollars is a program for what? Like almost a year with one of our solutions, whether it's us or one of our friendly competitors. Yeah. So it, it you know it it just doesn't take a lot. But like like we said a few minutes ago, you, the investment is more than just the dollars. It's time, and we we see the people who don't do well who complain that they don't get an ROI. And this is regardless of whatever industry, but in this case, commercial truck, if they don't get the ROI, it's because they didn't put their part of the I in it. And their part of the I is investment of time. Absolutely. Thank you so much on that. And that is so critical. Thank I mean, you. it's amazing. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm amazed at how uh, top management doesn't understand what commercial truck trader does. And that's another yeah. part of our visits, you know, because we want to evaluate what tools are you using. And I ask dealer principals and general managers, do you understand how that tool works? And are you, uh, what I term, are you mentoring and are you leading in a way that's going to make sure that tool is maximized? And that is so critical. And so often we've been able to have a GM say, wow, you know, I never thought about that. I should be know more about this, shouldn't I? And I go, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and but, I'm going to train you in exactly what it does and the value <laughs> of it. Uh, you know, it's worth, uh, it's worth it. <laughs> it's a lot less expensive than a Sunday ad on the back of the paper. Oh my Lord. It's, it's unbelievable. And you know, I, we have uh, about 3,100 dealers right now as customers, uh, you know, from class one through class eight. Um, we're certified digital partners with FCA, with Ford, with, uh, GM uh, with with Nissan, Peterbilt, and others, and all the OEMs talk about the same thing that that we're talking about now. It's it's the engagement at that dealer level, and sometimes the disconnect between the general manager and the commercial manager. The commercial manager, in in just my humble opinion, has one of the hardest jobs because they're responsible for all kinds of stuff, and they have to do it on their own yet they don't always have purchasing authority either. So they have to advocate. And then, you know, if, if you've got two deliveries, plus you've got all this other upfit body work that you're trying to get done, you know, you really don't have time to put together a case for a, a digital solution and give it to the general manager and say, this is why, I mean, it's just, there's so much that a commercial manager has to do, but you know, they, that's where people like, you guys and we come in, we, we try to talk at the general manager level that, you know, these things are really important. And, you know, there are people like Safford, CJDR, uh, who, who really does really well. They understand the program and they're, they're you know, a, a good sized dealership. And then we have people like Penske, who 
who are customers who are huge and measure everything, they're also good customers. And the reason both of those different kinds are is because they're committed. You know, they're engaged. They, they, they understand that, like we said, the ROI, that, that I, that investment really includes them doing the things they need to do as well. And I, I'm so frustrated when I, I, when I get a call that says, a general manager says, I have to cut this out. And then that in the, in the next sentence, the commercial manager says, but it's accounting for 50% of my sales or 30% of my sales. And now I'm, I'm, I'm losing out on this. And, you know, it's, it's just hard. It's a hard battle sometimes. Yeah. Oh, it, it truly is. And, you know, we, uh, you know, we're such big supporters because we know how great this tool is. Uh, Will and I uh, have a request of Charles Balls. Can, can we make that request now? Go for it. Oh, no. We're going to be doing a series of these virtual boot camps. Can you commit to being our guest on every one? Uh, thank God. I, th I thought this was going to be like some initiation. I thought I was going to like get, get paddled or something. No, this is fantastic. I'd be honored. I know how important these boot camps are to commercial salespeople. I've been, I've, I've really seen the power of these and how they've truly been life changing. You've, you've, I've seen before my eyes, you turn underperforming salespeople have become top salespeople and top salespeople have become downright superstars. And I'd love to be part of that. Absolutely. I, we really believe in what you do. And so, so does just about everybody that I've ever taught. I've, I've never had anybody say that your system hasn't driven sales and actually made people better. So absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And I do have one more request. Uh, yes. The first time that we did training at your facility, you walked in the room and you made an announcement. And would you share that with, with every listener and viewer? Yes, I will. It, it doesn't get old. I can tell you that because it's so hilarious. So, no, it doesn't. So, um, we, 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 uh, um, we have a great relationship with commercial truck training. And the first time we brought them into our Norfolk offices for one of their boot camps um, to host it, and we were just so honored to have them come in. Um, I walked in and I said, there was, there was a new teacher at my school who was a real football star. Um, and he was considered a real hard hitter in football. Uh, he was full of charisma. He's a very motivating personality. And he made a real impact on my life. And what's so fascinating is 40 years later, I'm right in this room with that very person. So I was so lucky to have him as a coach mentor and now a dear friend. And Ken Taylor's looking around like at everybody like, who, who, is, who is this? This sounds fantastic. And I said, it was you, Ken. And you're like, what? <laughs> now, obviously you made a greater impact on me than I did on you at that point. But uh, I, I certainly am just so lucky to have you as, as a coach and mentor and friend today. You and Will both are just fantastic. Well, we, we, uh, we respect and enjoy you. Uh, Will and I often talk about you being probably the most uh, humorous, but informative person that we know in the industry. So you, your sense of humor is knows no bounds. <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, what you know, I, I, I think we all have this. We understand this is just a job. If you make it just a job, but if you make it a way of life, if you make it something, if you're committed to helping people, and I'm not trying to be schmaltzy about this at all, no, but right. because you know, obviously, when we help people, we do better too. But when you commit yourself to really helping people, and, th and this, is, this will be the last thing, and this is the one thing I admire about you and Will <clears throat> and you know, people with whom I work, is we're not afraid to get our hands dirty. You know, we're not afraid to go on those four-legged sales calls. Absolutely. We're not afraid to talk to a dealer that's yelling so loud that saliva is flying out of his mouth. You know, <laughs> yes, I've had or, that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It, those, those are, we're not afraid to do that. And people respect that. Um, it's not always fun, but you know, the, that's why they call it work and not play. But you know, the, the rewards are so much more significant when we're helping others, you know? Absolutely. Thank you so much. We appreciate yeah. that and, and appreciate the partnership. You guys are on our website. 
you're part yeah, of everything that we do. And uh, we just you. really, really, really appreciate it. Charles, thank you for joining us today on the Extra Mile. Uh, yes. This is, this is a monumental day also because this is the first time that we've done these interviews on Zoom. Right, Will? Yeah. yeah. So you are the first. You're a pioneer. <laughs> well, I'm looking. You've got a great background. Will's got a bunch of trophies. And I've got all the crap my wife makes me keep in this room. I do have a question, though. Who is in that painting up there? <laughs> That's a Rembrandt painting that I bought at a yard sale. It was for $3, but I gave him $5 because the frame looks so good. So um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's obviously Rembrandt. not the original. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, you never know. You, you might be sitting on uh, about $50 million right now. That would be just enough to pay off my debts. That'd be perfect. <laughs> uh, spoken like the true Charles Bowles yes. that I know. Amen, brother. So thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Appreciate yeah, your time. You. Uh, okay. And uh, I know we'll see each other soon. I'll see you Oh, Lord, time. yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. See you tomorrow. Hopefully. See you tomorrow. <laughs> All right, friends. Take care. Thanks for everything. All, All right, right. Bye.